Welcome to the June monthly community call. This is June 16. As usual, our meetings are recorded for offline viewing. Our agenda today begins with updates that Keith Elliston, our CEO, will present. Keith will also speak and provide an update on the upcoming datathon. I'll speak briefly about our planning activities around the annual meeting. Terry Weymouth will provide an update on ongoing Transmart 1.2 activities. Jay Bergeron, co-chair of the 3C uh, Code Committee, will provide an update on version 1.3 and provide a high-level review of the requirements that have been gathered to date. And finally, Yanni Pandas from uh, the Etrix Initiative will provide an update on the recent alignment workshop that occurred uh, back uh, uh, earlier this, this year. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Keith to walk us through the foundation updates for June. Keith? Okay, Kevin, thanks. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. I'm trying to see the slides here. Interesting. I'm only seeing the poll window right now. Well, I'm going to close the poll. Yeah, I think you have to there. The poll. Yeah. We can share the results. We'll start with that since we're starting there. Um, in terms of updates, Rudy sent out a, a survey, and I'll show you a slide of that uh, uh, in a moment. Um, but I wanted to get a quick sense of how many people have responded, and we can see only 13% uh, have responded to that poll, so we're going to spend some time on that. Uh, let's move on to the presentation. So I can hide the results. Should the slides come up now? Voila. Okay, Kevin. Perfect. Now I know how that works. Um, let's start at the beginning. I'll hit that when we come back. And we can take a survey at the end of the uh, end of the meeting and see if it's changed. Can I go to slide one, Kevin? You should have a, a user survey slide up. No, I want to go to the top of the slides. Of my slides? Yeah, there we go. Quick updates. Um, so I just wanted to, to go through a couple of key things for people today. Uh, we'll talk about the survey. Um, uh, we had uh, a number of things that were uh, interesting to participate over in the last month. Uh, the EU Project Informatics Alignment Workshop, which uh, Yanni Pandas will uh, give us an overview of, uh, which was uh, held in London, uh, was a, a very successful uh, workshop. And I, I was actually surprised to see a, a large number of projects already using Transmart that I wasn't aware of. And so uh, Yanni will tell us more about that. Uh, we also uh, participated in uh, uh, a Proventa Open Source Spotlight workshop that was uh, sponsored by the Hive. Uh, Kays von Bachov was, uh, was the key host and uh, had a really active discussion about uh, various open source uh, uh, projects in the scientific area and uh, had the opportunity to have some really good conversations with uh, Nikki Schultz from uh, the CBIO portal group that's recently open sourced their platform. Uh, very good conversations, uh, a very good meeting. So I want to thank Kays for, for organizing that. Uh, as an FYI, um, our fiscal year ends at the end of June. Uh, as a team, we've been working on our fiscal 16 business plan and budget, which is uh, now being finalized. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview of that. Uh, but uh, that will be presented to our board at the July 15th board meeting. Uh, it's already in discussion with our finance committee uh, and uh, will be used to, to really push us forward in, in fiscal 16. Uh, and that brings us to the July 15th board meeting. Um, that will be uh, held uh, via GoToMeeting. This is our uh, one of our two virtual meetings this year. Uh, July 15th, I believe it's 9 to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so please, if you're a board member, uh, put that on your calendar and uh, we'll expect to see you then. Um, uh, and I'll give a quick uh, update on staffing and, and how we're doing on that as we go forward. Next slide, Kevin. Um, as Kevin was showing you uh, here previously and we did the quick poll on, uh, Ruby has put together a, a survey uh, to, to go out to people that we've sent to our mailing list, about 800 people on the list. Uh, it was sent out on June 12th. Um, our goal here is to get an updated view of our user community uh, to help us in, in our planning as we go forward into fiscal 16 and beyond. Uh, as I said, we sent that out to 800 uh, plus email addresses. Uh, so far we have 38 responses and as we can see from our attendees, only 13% of you 
uh, have uh, have responded to that. If you have not gotten the uh, the survey, please send an email to Rudy Rudy Zone at TransmartFoundation.org, uh, and he will send you that survey. Uh, as an incentive, um, every uh, everyone who enters uh, or, or responds to a survey, or you can opt out as well, um, is entered to win an iPad Air, which we'll be giving away, uh, I believe, at the at the meeting next time. Um, so uh, enter yourself in for this. Let's uh, get collect the data. I've actually been really uh, intrigued by the data we've gotten in response so far. Um, we've had a number of groups that have uh, well over 100 users that are being supported. Uh, and that's that's quite uh, quite encouraging and very valuable information for us. Um, I think if you look at uh, uh, at the uh, the pie chart below, you can see that uh, we have uh, the largest response from academia. Uh, we have the next largest response from pharma. Uh, we're still looking for good responses from uh, biotech and nonprofit. Um, so again, uh, if you haven't received the survey, please uh, send an email to Rudy. Um, if you have any questions about the survey. Uh, please uh, send those to Rudy. Um, all the information that we collect will be uh, anonymized and used internally for uh, you know, budgetary planning and, and management purposes. Hey, Keith, this is Brian. Yeah, Brian. Uh, can I hi? Can I ask a question? Do we have just in terms of the 800 who've been um, queried about a survey? What does the pie chart of the 800 look like in terms of you know pharma versus academic, not for profit? That would be interesting to see that pie chart. Rudy, do you have a sense? Oh, can we activate Rudy? No, oh, sorry. I'm, 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 I can do it. Um, yeah, um, we've actually we have looked at that a bit, but I, but I don't have a summary, you know, with exact numbers. But um, you know, I think it's this is sort of reflective. It's, it's sort of on this line. Um, you know, I, 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 I was really I interested in this, yeah. in the it's, it's uh, quite, academic versus pharma. You know, because yeah. I think about you know Transmart. You know, you think pharma. And yeah. so, you know, in our management call or something, we can get into that more. I think it's just an interesting uh, interesting thing to look at right now. Yeah, this, this is a list of, you know, anybody who's attended our, our um, events or, or, you know, respond to other things in the past, we've gathered together and people can opt out, you know, so these are people who are really interested. It's like 800 and some people on the list. And it's, uh, it, it is sort of surprising to see the, the diversity, you know, and then there's quite a few academics and quite a few pharma. A lot of people have used Gmail accounts and not filled in companies. So, you know, we have to, you know, that part of this, the survey is to hope that we can update some of those records as well. So, you know, we'll, um, we'll have more data. Okay. Thank you, Rudy. Sure. And, and just to add to your point there, Brian, I think, you know, one of the, the, the founding tenants we put together when we formed the foundation was to not have a, you know, a pharma dominated organization, but one that really included academics, nonprofits, government, et cetera. And that's a really good measure of our success there. I agree. I'm just I'm I'm, I'm going to be interested not only to see the pie chart, but you know, delve in and kind of look at that and you know, get a get a current state assessment of where we're at. It'd be very helpful. Thank you. Well, one of the things that we will do um, when we have collected all the uh, information is that we will publish a, a quick uh, synopsis of the results, so that everyone can see uh, what we've learned. Mm -hmm. Great. Next slide, Kevin. So uh, as we've gone along with our business planning uh, for our fiscal 16, uh, we always take a look back at the last year and, and see how we've done. Uh, this was presented to the board at our last board meeting, uh, but the, the key thing that we've done over the course of the last two years is really work the foundation from a, a very early startup role um, into a, a well-stabilized and, uh, and growing organization. Uh, one of the key things that, that I did over the past uh, quarter as I developed the, uh, the business plan and, and uh, budget for the next coming year is to get a sense of where we are in the world of open source foundations. And, uh, and the fact is, is we're somewhere between Apache Foundation and Mozilla Foundation uh, from a financial uh, perspective. That is, we're, we're actually slightly larger from a, a financial perspective than Apache Foundation and a little bit smaller than the Mozilla Foundation. Uh, we're also quite a bit smaller than the Linux Foundation, which has a, an annual operating budget of around $20 million a year. Um, but it gives you a sense of, of the, over a short period of time, how we've established uh, the Transmart Foundation in this space and, and been quite successful. Uh, I think that brings around a number of really interesting discussions uh, as we're having with uh, the CBIO portal groups and others 
around uh, you know, how we continue to grow as a community and, and what fits under the umbrella of the Transmart Foundation. Next slide. Um, if we look at the, the priorities that we have uh, established um, as a team for fiscal 16, um, our key goals for the year are to get a production release of version 1.3 out the door, uh, and that will be with the full implementation of our quality initiatives around 1.3 with functional testing, etc. cetera. Uh, to begin, uh, the development on version two uh, of the platform, which is a, you know, we've got an evolution of the platform in version one and a revolutionary new development in version two. Uh, we're working on obtaining a full three-year funding for our fellows program. We've initiated the fellows program. We've got uh, three fellows on board now. And our goal is to extend that and to, to make it a, a well-funded uh, an operational program. Uh, we also are working on obtaining full funding and sponsorship for the version 1.3 program. Uh, and we'll begin uh, funding work on the version 2 development program. Uh, so these are all key initiatives that we have. And uh, to help us with these, uh, we're in the process of recruiting a, a business development person to help uh, join the foundation and help us with these activities. Um, we also will develop a, a, a mature content strategy and key resources around this, uh, really looking at that content repository, uh, how we make uh, more transmart ready data available, and, and how we uh, bring more data into the open data space. Uh, the datathon that we're holding at the end of this month is a really good example of activities that we're taking on that strategy and that approach. And then finally, uh, we're looking at extending the reach of the foundation beyond transmart that is uh, evaluating additional open source projects and open source opportunities uh, to really see the, what are the best ways to help us grow the foundation. And uh, we'll be doing all that, of course, in conjunction with our board of directors and the key strategic advice that they provide us. Next slide. In terms of that, uh, I wanted to remind you uh, of the team and, and how we're organized currently. Um, you remember the officers and management. Uh, key changes that we've made over the last month is uh, we brought Peter Rice on uh, half time. As uh, the content fellow, he's working with Terry, who is the code fellow, and uh, coordinating with uh, Julie Bryant and with Brian um, on the key uh, functions of the content committee. Uh, we've also brought on Keith Dangle, uh, who's located in, in Germany, as our community fellow. He's joined as of June 1st. And uh, we'll be working with, uh, with Sherry and with Kevin on the key functional act activities of the con uh, community committee. And so he's rapidly becoming engaged in those. Next slide. I think everybody knows uh, Peter, so I, I, I won't introduce Peter, but I wanted to take a chance to introduce Keith because he's really coming into the Transmark community. Uh, Keith, um, uh, his background is in mathematics, um, has an honors mathematics degree from McGill in Montreal, spent 23 years working with uh, GSK in Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. Uh, he has experience across a number of different areas within genetics and genomics. Uh, nine years in lab automation. He also did clinical and regulatory IT, 14 years in genetics research. Um, turns out our social networks overlap, but we uh, never met until Transmart. Um, prior, he was doing scientific computing, uh, embedded instrument software and data systems, um, uh, etc. He retired from GSK uh, last year and has, uh, joined, uh, has moved to Germany to, to join his spouse there, uh, who's working at BASF. And I'm going to really slaughter this, but he currently resides in Neustadt on the Weinstrasse near Mannheim. So if anybody asks where, uh, where Keith is located, he's located near Mannheim. Uh, that's my, my key piece. Do we have one more slide for Keith there, Kevin? Yeah. So let me, let me just turn this over really quickly to Keith to give his own uh, quick introduction. But we're really happy to bring Keith on board. He's already met uh, with, with Sherry Sal. Uh, and with Kevin, and uh, we're rapidly getting engaged in the work that we're doing. As I said, he's, he's nicely located in Germany, and so he'll be helping us out quite a bit in our interactions with uh, various European efforts, including IMI and TRIPS. Hi there. Can everyone hear me? Loud and clear. Yes. No? Okay, good. Um, so thank you, Keith. Um, actually, you did pretty well with the pronunciation. It's Neustadt an der Weinstraße. Um, so well done. Um, Yes, just to, uh, I think Keith covered the, um, the background pretty well. I have a, a bit more detail on this slide just to uh, orient everyone. Um, as he mentioned, I retired from GSK last year uh, to join my wife here, uh, who's working for BASF Plant Sciences. Uh, she works on trait development, so we get to talk about weird plant genomes at dinner time. Um, but 
for the last uh, 14 years or so, I was working in the genetics research department, first in the bioinformatics group, and then later on as we uh, started to focus more on PGX as opposed to disease genetics, um, I headed up a small group that uh, was called the genetic data sciences group, and our role was really to uh, be the gatekeeper and provide analysis ready data to the statistical geneticists. Um, early on, I led the develop, design and development of a, of a uh, knowledge and data management platform superficially similar to Transmart. Um, it was uh, essentially the repository for all of the genotype data that we produced in all of our studies. And that continued active development through about 2009. It still exists, although I have to say that uh, since about 2010, as, as genetic uh, data migrated to kind of indexed flat file formats, um, the use of an Oracle database, which, uh, which under, underlie the, uh, the system, um, sort of faded into the background. And furthermore, some of the IT support began to wane. So um, it, uh, it, it began to fade in its usage a bit which is unfortunate because it made it, the system made it very easy to aggregate data. And just in general, uh, it simplified data stewardship. It made, uh, made it much easier to know that we were looking at all the data we had and had some idea what was being done with it. Um, over time, a lot of what my group did involved focusing more and more on uh, consent management and regulatory compliance issues. So. Um, it became more and more important to ensure that data were being used only for the purposes uh, for which it had been collected and under the terms of informed consent that the patients had signed. Um, I am not myself a, a large-scale programmer anymore. I used to be, but um, my role primarily was uh, the interface between the scientists and the IT department uh, who were responsible for developing the actual technical infrastructure. Um, so I'm hoping that my background fits in well with the needs of the foundation at this point, and I'm very excited to be joining at this time to help uh, support and grow the community here. Um, I know that everyone has worked really hard on this uh, platform for the last few years, and I'm jumping in just as the awards are starting to come in, so I can't take any credit for those. But I'm hoping that by next year I can take some small measure of credit for the next award that, that we get. So. Um, are there any questions uh, from around the table? I think we'll we'll pick up questions at the end, Keith, if that's okay. Okay, sure. So we try and reserve some time for that at the end, but uh, I just want to say thanks for joining. We appreciate you joining and, and working with us on this. We're pretty excited about this. And for those of you in the community, um, we just added one further level of, of obfuscation. Uh, we do have Keith uh, Elliston and myself. We have Keith Nangle, and we have Keith von Bachov. So. Be very careful who you're addressing and know, know the difference in names. Um, you can just call me Hey You if you want, and then you can have Keith as, as Keith Nang. Uh, next slide. Uh, okay, move forward. Um, the key thing I wanted to do is, is give a little more detail on the datathon that's coming up. Uh, the date is uh, June 30th to July 2nd. Uh, we have, I have to update that number, 16 confirmed. Uh, scientists that are participating. Our goal is to have 20. Uh, we can probably go over by a couple. Um, we have more than 20 that have uh, asked to be included and, and prioritized. Uh, there are a number of people that have not yet responded to, uh, to calls for confirmation. Uh, we have to get the applications in this week to Loney for, uh, uh, for people to be approved to work on the data. So if you have not gotten replied to my emails, we'll get another one this week. Uh, but if we don't get you on the list this week, um, then we, we probably can't fit you into the data phone. So again, we're at 16. We have four open slots. Um, you better get back to us if you want to participate, and uh, we're pretty excited about that. Um, the current status uh, of the, the environment is that we, we have installed all the data in Transmart uh, up on the Loney cloud servers. Um, and we've gone through some testing issues. The vast majority of things have tested uh, out well. Uh, we have one uh, current database issue in which we're having some queries that are taking about 10x longer than they should that we're currently uh, troubleshooting. Uh, we expect to have that finished, uh, cleaned up within the week, um, et cetera. So uh, uh, you know, watch the status board for, for any updates there. But uh, uh, that looks like it's going to be in good shape. 
on next uh, on the 22nd uh, next week we have uh, the pre-datathon webinars. So uh, Monday, June 22nd, there'll be a special training class for the datathon attendees. If you don't know how to use Transmart yet, you haven't been experienced with it, uh, please attend this at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, Kristen Sweet from TR will be taking you through um, how to use Transmart, particularly in the context of this datathon. Uh, on Tuesday, the 23rd, um, uh, Ken and I will be giving you a quick uh, overview of what the datathon will be, how it will happen, uh, what the course of, of events will be, or what data is available, um, and all the key details that you want to know about the datathon and execution. Uh, on Wednesday, the 24th, uh, we'll have uh, a presentation on other data resources available and other sets of tools, um, including uh, data that's coming from the University of Luxembourg. Um, including the PD map and, and some other specialized resources. And then on Thursday, we have an overview of, of tools and various vendors uh, that will be available for plugging into the Transmart platform and uh, for use alongside the Transmart platform. Uh, just to remind people that um, the data status is that uh, the data will be on the Loney servers for the, uh, uh, the PPMI, the ADMI, the Load 2, and Biopine data sets. Additional data sets will be on the Loney servers, but also available on other servers. Um, so for example, Luxembourg is putting up a couple of servers that they'll be using that connect to the Galaxy, et cetera. So uh, it's going to be a pretty exciting environment, a little bit of a wild west, and uh, I think it's going to be a, a really interesting event. We've also had a number of uh, press uh, groups um, ask about uh, covering the event, so we expect to get some good press coverage as well. Next slide. Uh, just a, a quick high-level overview of the agenda. Again, the Datathon runs much like our hackathons. It runs over three days. Uh, we'll start in the morning with a, an organizing meeting in the, in the morning. Uh, we, we'll do the self-organizing of the, of the teams into three to five groups. Uh, and then uh, we'll get the teams get to work, um, define you know, around the key objectives. We have the three key objectives of the Datathon uh, and get going. Uh, people are allowed and encouraged to continue working as long as they want. Um, on the, the second day, July, July 1st, um, we'll have a quick review uh, in the morning, questions and answers, and then people will get to work. Uh, we'll have a special talk um, at lunchtime on July 1st. Um, that we've uh, we got a, a group invited to come in and give us some special talks that are motivating, etc. Um, at the end of day, day two, July 1st, we'll have a, a group dinner for everyone to get together and, and have some conversations. The third day, um, people will get to work, we'll do some morning work, and in the afternoon we'll have pr uh, team presentations and results. Uh, we'll give out awards, and then we'll talk about next steps to, to keep things moving, and the data film will end at 4 o'clock. So that's the, the high-level uh, overview. Uh, we're expecting a really interesting time, and this is our inaugural data film, so we're expecting the uh, participants here to really help us define how we do this in the future. Next slide. So that's, uh, that's my quick updates. Um, I guess they weren't as quick as I wanted. They took about 20 minutes. But let me turn it over to Kevin, and, uh, and we'll move on in the meeting. Kevin? Great. Thank you, Keith. So I'll give a quick update on the annual meeting, and then after that, we'll hear from Terry Weymouth on the updates around version 1.2. And then uh, Jay Bergeron will uh, present a, a summary of the version 1.3 requirements and some of the activities around uh, 1.3 development. So the quick update on the 2015 Transmart Foundation Annual Meeting, as I think has been uh, conveyed on previous calls, this year's meeting will be held in Amsterdam at the National Cancer Institute of the Netherlands. The dates are Monday, October 19 through Wednesday, um, uh, October 21st. The uh, annual meeting this year is graciously being hosted by the CTMM Trade Initiative. Our format will follow very much on uh, our previous two year or two uh, annual meetings with uh, a blend of keynotes, technical and scientific sessions, a hackathon. We'll also hold 3C committee meetings. Uh, there will be a poster session, group dinner. We'll also uh, uh, have an award ceremony. And, and also provide uh, some, some training um, opportunities. So again, this is being structured to follow very much what we've done over the last couple of years. So we'll have a registration site, um, again, using Eventbrite that will be coming soon, and we'll communicate that out, that information out very uh, shortly. So 
at this point really hold or save the dates of October 19 through 21 for, for the 2015 annual meeting. We have a number of individuals that uh, are either part of the Transmart Foundation management team um, or participate uh, from a community perspective in the 3C uh, uh, committees. And then uh, we have an additional um, uh, number of people from CTMM and uh, vendor organizations that will be helping to organize the meeting. I'm not going to uh, read out individual uh, members' names here. So that's the quick update on the annual meeting. If you have specific questions, hold those till the end, and we'll cover those during our Q&A uh, session. So at this point, I'd like to turn things over to Terry so that he can give us a quick update on uh, version 1.2. So Terry, take it away, please. Do I have audio? Can you hear me? Yes, you're loud and clear. Okay. All right, excellent. Go uh, next slide. Um, we, it, it, oh, okay, I'll have to have you click on the links. So um, uh, working on JIRA to triage the um, um, hundred or so back items, um, uh, myself, Peter Ward, Kristen Rippon, Zach Axel have been uh, reviewing Cura reports to ask the question, does this report still apply? Can it be replicated? And sorting the Jira items out into three stacks, um, items, Jira items that, that are in fact reporting an existing error and can be replicated easy, ready for the developer to work on. Jira items that are reporting an existing error but don't have enough detail to be replicated need to go back to the reporter saying fix this Jira item so that we can actually fix the code and Jira items that no longer apply are being closed down. That process is going rather too slowly I think but um, so uh, as soon as I get out from under um, setting things up for the datathon, I'll be concentrating on, on that along with Peter. Um, we thought it would be useful to just review contributions to 1.2 since the last release. And so uh, if you could, um, Kevin, take us through these links. Um, so, so Terry, if you have them up yeah. on your machine, I, I'll just make you presenter. Oh, okay. <laughs> or, or not. Um, Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead. And... I, I think it might be quicker quicker if you just, yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. I think, yeah. hmm, sorry. Uh, yeah. This, this is a graph of the... Uh, just hey, oh, hang on, one. just go ahead and talk and I'll pull it up yeah. momentarily. What we did is uh, three graphs of Transmart app, tra our module Transmart data, showing the contributions for the, from the last, um, since uh, February 16, which is uh, the time of the last release. So here you can see, for example, Transmart, the main app, Transmart app, we have contributions from Florin, um, Peter Rice, uh, and others, um, Florian being the main contributor. Uh, and let's do the next one. Actually, if you want, you can just type. The only thing that changes is our modules, but that's okay. Go in there. <clears throat> Most of the updates have been done to Transmart app, our modules, which is the uh, advanced workflows and Transmart data, which is the framework we're use, that most people are using for, that many people are using for ETL. So next slide, next URL. I'm not going to talk too much about that. So you can see we've had a fair number of contributions going into um, uh, the ongoing effort um, uh, of the order of dozens of, of contributions from various people. That's fine, Kevin. We can go back to this slide. <clears throat> Just other things that have been contributed to the REST API, the Core, core DB and API, Transmart ETL, and the Transmart test. Um, okay. Did I have anything else? Mm -mm. Uh, 
These are URLs for the activity for the last month. I don't know if we want to let, in the interest of time, let's not do that. Um, so the current release is 1.2.4. We have a target release date of August 15 from 1.2.5. Um, we've had the predo pro predominance of contributions to 1.2.5 have been done by the Hive and Imperial College. Uh, we're looking for, I know there's other development going on out there, um, so we're looking for your contributions in GitHub or, and or your contributions by contributing to uh, the code development. I think that's enough. Thank you, Terry. So ju just to reiterate what, what Terry just said, um, the, the Hive and Imperial have been doing a lot of uh, work, uh, continued work around version 1.2. It would really be great to see individuals and other organizations step up to work with, with Terry, to work with Peter, and to work uh, with, with some of the others to, to continue the, the important activities around version 1.2 that, that will ultimately lead to better quality in terms of, of what is available today. So with that, um, we'll turn it over to Jay Bergeron to provide an update on uh, version 1.3. So uh, Jay, you've been unmuted, and uh, please take it away. OK, guys, can you, can you hear me? We can. All right, great. Uh, so uh, do I need, should I share? Let's see. So, so I, I have uh, Sherry's slides up for you to walk through. If you have okay, how about how about this? Can I can I have a favor? Could could you let me share these? I've I've done just a couple updates that I think might be helpful. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Can you see? I mean, get into. The yes, we can. All right. Um, so basically, I. These are Sherry's slides. Uh, they've been updated by Peter and Terry. And I found out this morning that Sherry wasn't going to be here. And so I'm not overly familiar with them. But we'll start off with the wild guess in terms of 1.3, what it will actually take to implement all the requirements that have been put together. And Terry and Peter came up with the 1 to 5 scale uh, for each requirement. Basically, with the 1 being, if I get this right, Terry, about um, uh, yeah, uh, am I, uh, do I have audio here? Uh, yes. Uh, hang, okay. I, I do not want to be held to these figures. These are bogus figures at the very <laughs> best. So we can go on to the next slide. <laughs> no, actually, I am going to hold you and Peter to these figures because that's what I do. But, but, I, but I think it's, here's what we're trying to get at. Because I think regardless of how accurate these are in the end, I think I personally trust Terry, you and Peter, to give us some sort of scale of, of relative to these, these various requirements and various elements of the, of the requirements for 1.3. So I do think these are useful. And so what Terry has essentially done is gone through and provided a spreadsheet with all the elements of what, of what the score, right? And the score being a relative a couple of weeks to maybe six months of a, of a full-time developer. And when you add it all up together, it comes out with about seven person years, which is obviously not insubstantial. So we need to keep these, some of these in mind when we think of prioritizing. Okay, so what I'm going to go through is each of the elements of the requirements. I'm not going to go through them in detail. But what we need at this point, now that the requirements are together, is we need these folks who are requesters and those who are interested to come forward and with, with the resources to get elements of these done, because ultimately we're going to have to prioritize as based on what organizations are willing to come forward and fund these, whether it's cash or whether it's, it's some kind of equivalent. But probably in this case cash, because we're doing things a little differently, rather than amalgamating a number of different bills like we did for 1.2, we're looking at doing doing uh, where fundamentally new development efforts predominantly uh, with maybe a, a bit of, of, of compilation. So let's start off with the ICB2 integration. And again, uh, again, the not holding Terry to this, but the relatively uh, about maybe about six months, because a lot of this has already been done with the hackathon. 
and Harvard, Genomics England, Etrix is interested. It also for that Pfizer is potentially interested here because of the FIWAS implementation that Harvard has, as well as the longitudinal um, elements that we might be able to get from this. So this is one element uh, that's put forward and looking, again, for funding and interest. Um, just functional improvements, uh, analytical improvements, in total maybe about nine, nine months, requested by Sanofi, Etrix, and Rancho. And I think Sanofi is quite interested in doing these and, 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 and I think will be a, a sponsor here. I'm not sure if there's anyone else from Sanofi on. We have the non-analytic functional improvements, again, also coming from, uh, from Sanofi, uh, but also from BT Global, Merck, Decada, Etrix, a number of, of interested parties here. Uh, platform non-functional, uh, again, uh, yeah, I should say uh, approximately one year of effort, so a bit, uh, again, some of the similar requesters, Merck, Decada. And some of these, like the plug and play environment, this is a cornerstone of, of the version 2.0. So part of this is, again, uh, part of that is, is why this could take a reasonably lengthy development time is, again, some of these were, were, were fundamental shifts in the architecture model. And, yep. and again, keep some of these in mind. Oh, go ahead, Terry. Uh, Jay, a, a quick comment. Peter and I did not make estimates on anything that's labeled 2.0. So those are not included in the um, the overall estimates that we generated. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. Uh, the API and connectors, and again, I'll, I'll put I'll put Pfizer as an interested party here as well. Uh, see Bios portal, and I can tell you from the meeting that that Keith and I and Kays were at last week that uh, Garrett uh, or Eric uh, from uh, uh, from uh, trade was very, very interested in doing this and basically came out and said, why can't we just get people together and, and put CBIO portal, um, have a connection between CBIO portal and, and Transbar. And there are a number of folks in that meeting, both uh, people who were working in the oncology research space as well as outside of that, including, including someone working in, in, in autism, were very, very interested in feeling in thinking that they could use the C bio portal visualizations for their non oncology efforts. So something to keep in mind. Um, again, and some of these are are honestly well on their way. Things like X map. But again, uh, here are some elements. Um, you know, nine months considering all these elements. Um, yeah, I think relatively scaling is is. Um, uh, maybe a lot of value that we could we could bring to the to the platform uh, for ontology, and this is interesting because uh, this came out of Reagan Udall. But as as many of you know, uh, the Predict Talks uh, project uh, between Reagan Udall and and Pharma is one that Pfizer is very interested in, and, and Pfizer being the first pharma in. Um, there was a strong. Um, a strong request for an ontology management system, and uh, so I so by by default uh, Pfizer is in here as well. But uh, something I think that would, that would be interesting, and and again, if we can come up with uh, funding mechanisms to do that, uh, ETL again, this is one that's gonna, that would take a substantial amount of time uh, to implement uh, the. You know, the, the elements here, I, if I remember correctly, ETL was removed from uh, the 2.0 uh, architecture uh, recommendations and, and kept as something separate. But again, this would be a, a longer term investment that maybe we want to think about either aspects of the ETL that we could improve or uh, potentially a post 1.3 version that would, that would have ETL in it. But again, some folks who, some organizations that are interested. The built-in genome browser, again, this looks like it would be relatively lightweight for those who are interested in, in that type of functionality. And uh, the patient overview, which uh, honestly, I, I, I'm not quite sure uh, well, this is a lot of, of all available data for a single patient. Uh, this is something that, again, could be, uh, looks like it could be implemented relatively straightforwardly. And maybe one of the requesters here can come up with the, 
with what looks to be a relatively small amount of uh, funding allocation to do this. Hey, or in hey. common with the teacher. Yes. Hey, this is Brian. Hi. Uh, let me ask a question about that. I mean, should this be research participant overview? I mean, I'm just wondering about the word patient here. Yeah, I'm not sure. This one didn't I would think that. that. You know, we uh, I can I can give some clarity on this. Um, so it's Yanni. So it's uh, I um, I helped Sherry update the list so I can. The patient overview is basically they want they would like to be able to, as a user, one person needs to would like to come in, click on a particular patient, and be able to see the sample and data availability across across the whole spread of what is, whatever is in the database, um, looking at specifically some of the research programs or uh, where you have this issue where not all the um, samples are collected for all patients. Right. So I was just making the distinction between patients and healthcare delivery and research participants who may or may not be patients in a clinic or a hospital or something like that. We can take it offline. We can we can replace Man. the patient with with subject. Yeah, well, yeah, participant would be good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think we're okay. Yeah, yeah. I think this is maybe the last one um, for genomic support. This is the one that came out uh, originally as the highest priority, and I think probably still has the highest priority. Uh, something a number of organizations are in, uh, are we're interested in. As we talk about at the annual, at the, I'm sorry, not the annual, the meeting that we had uh, during BioIT World, uh, the idea of setting up an abstraction layer between uh, the phenotypic data in Transmart and scale-out systems for uh, the genomic data. Uh, and, you know, something that, uh, look, and again, we're going to look at six months, but something that looks honestly uh, maybe reasonably tractable to do, and a number of uh, organizations interested in doing this. I'm sorry, one uh, wearable data. Uh, coming out of, uh, uh, I assume, BI is boring or uh, And that's interesting. Um, and uh, security, which uh, I think uh, Etrix may be, may be just doing this, uh, some of these updates. But again, a, a, what appears to be a relatively small um, engagement. And that's it. I guess what so, so those are the elements of requirements that have come forward. Oh, and Steve, I think I need to turn it over to you in terms of how do we go about understanding what organizations are ready to come in and willing to, to fund, I should say, contribute to these specific elements so that we can we can we can select what we're going to do and and trigger the 1.3 development cycle off. Great. Hey, Jay. <clears throat> this is Keith. No, that's, that's a nice presentation. And uh, from the perspective of how we're moving forward, our key goal has been to aggregate all these requirements into a, a single view. Uh, one of the things that we've done is also develop a spreadsheet um, with some man-month estimates behind this um, that we've reviewed. Uh, I have a meeting, in fact, this afternoon with, uh, with Sherry to, to go over some of her key elements of that. It's pretty clear that there are a number of groups that have already embarked upon some development activities here. Uh, we need to aggregate that. And then uh, my goal is to reach out individually to everyone that's out there uh, that has a potential sponsorship role. So uh, at uh, Genomics England, uh, Behringer, uh, Merck, Sanofi, Pfizer, Takeda, uh, et cetera. Uh, I'd like to see if we can bring people together for um, a meeting uh, perhaps uh, in the next couple of weeks to summarize those results. But uh, for, for the sake of time and, and efficiency, um, I'll be reaching out to groups individually so we can gather all that information. Uh, what we end up with uh, out of that will be a prioritized list of features, uh, a key set of sponsors for those features, an understanding of the development process for those, uh, and some gaps that we need to fill. And our key goal is to understand what those gaps are. Uh, the other thing is to make sure that we've got the infrastructure in place to project manage the process. So we've been working with Jay Farron on this, uh, with, uh, with Terry and Peter as well, uh, on that process. And that, that'll be uh, driven a bit by who is participating in the development. Uh, we expect from the development process that we'll have uh, developers from Imperial College, uh, from the Hive, uh, from Harvard, uh, and some from the foundation, including Terry and Peter, um, working on this. If there are other groups that would like to participate in development, we'd like to know. We're reaching out to people that worked uh, 
on the 1.2 uh, and seeing if there are additional groups that want to be involved in the 1.3 development. So over the next uh, next week, um, I will have meetings set up individually with everyone who's identified themselves as a sponsor, uh, and we'll go from there. That's great. And uh, I, I will say Pfizer, is, Pfizer wants to be a part of this, and I'm hoping the rest of the rest of you out there want to be a part of this as well. Well, we're certainly counting on Pfizer. We're counting on Sanofi. You know, Pfizer, Sanofi, and Decatur have been leaders in the past. Uh, we expect that to continue, and we have other leaders out there that we hope uh, will join us. Um, if anybody has any questions on this, or if there's, if I haven't reached out to you and you have an interest, reach out to me. It's Keith.Elliston at TransmartFoundation.org. Uh, but if you haven't heard from me by the end of this week, uh, reach out to me, and, and I'll put you on the list. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Keith. Um, our last presenter today is Yanni Pandis from Imperial College London, who is going to provide an update on uh, the recent uh, cross IMI uh, workshop. So, so Yanni, I've made you a presenter, and uh, you can run your own slides. And you need to unmute yourself. It helps if I can if I can see the, the mouse. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Um, okay, uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Excellent. So um, I'm just going to give you a brief overview, and luckily some of the issue, some of the topics I wanted to cover have already been covered previously. So we had this um, EU project informatics alignment workshop hosted at Imperial College um, over the two days, 28th and 29th of April, and um, it was organized by by Etrix. Um, so uh, Natalie Julian from the um, from the European Systems Biology uh, Institute, Institute and Etrix, as well as myself, took the leading role. And uh, Kays uh, van Bockel from the Hive um, initiated this originally. So. Um, just to, to let you know, when all of the some of the requirements that Jay was uh, listing previously, when whenever it said Etrix, it wouldn't, it would, it's not Etrix necessarily, but it's one of the one of the many projects that you're seeing on the slide at the moment, which uh, participated um, in the the workshop. So it was uh, we had a very good turnout, and that was uh, that was very um, promising. Um, we. So essentially, the the news, the the um, workshop, the aims were to try and collect all of these uh, projects that we know have informatics needs into one specific place, into one place. Some are using Transmart, some are not, and we asked them to describe the the research activities with the projects, what their what their overall goals are in a scientific perspective. As well, what their informatics use cases are. If they're using Transmart, what what are they using Transmart for? Plus any other informatics tools which they're using, which they're using. And the the goal was to to see obviously feed in these requirements to the 1.3 uh, roadmap as we've done. Um, also um, uncover project synergies across Europe where where projects would should be um, working together, um, and and generally um, try and try and see where we're going, where the next steps are. So I'm going to give you an overview. So we started off by day one by um, by Keith uh, Elliston um, giving a presentation about uh, the Transmart uh, Foundation vision. Kays gave a presentation about uh, what, what the Hive's uh, vision of Transmart 2.0 is, um, as, long as, as well as been talking to various uh, people across the community. Um, and um, Professor Guo um, also gave a um, his vision on the technical how how the uh, Transmart development uh, should um, should uh, pursue. And then we we uh, had presentations from all of the projects that you see on the screen at the moment, um, briefly presenting their use cases as well as filling in the forms. And then so. What we did was we then um, we came back the next day and we um, and we summarized what we'd heard in the the previous day plus tried to consolidate a little bit of the requirements and see what what was uh, given. So I'm now presenting you a a few um, snippets of uh, the presentations given. So this was um, 
this was uh, Professor Guo's uh, presentation, which uh, was uh, generally around the theme of Transmart as a service, where essentially this is the vision of Vitrix, where you we were building um, some big data storage, so um, and, um, omics backend, backend, which could be one of the options for 1.3. Uh, data harmonization system, um, analytic, a big large-scale analytical engine, plus some of the uh, plugins that we've developed, we've contributed were specifically the Galaxy plugin, uh, one one version of the XNAP plugin, and some of the work we've been doing from from IBM. So this is how uh, how um, at least the the CTO of the foundation sees the um, the Transmart development. So ITB2 is highlighted in 1.2, just mentioning that. You know, we, we're still maintaining the data model, but we've, uh, we've not, we haven't got a strong dependency on iPod in 1.2. So this was how um, this slide, um, I hope, summarizes all of the um, the, the um, EK's talk. So going on, um, this is just one of the slides that I extracted from uh, Kay's presentation, where he was. Uh, it was nice to see that there was a lot of um, a lot of uh, overlap for 2.0 about this modular type of architecture. Which uh, so it was nice seeing independent independent two people that hadn't really discussed this previously uh, completely aligning um, along the presentation the, the thinking of the development. And then this is uh, coming from uh, I, Keith. Already showed this slide. So uh, talking about um, Keith gave us a uh, uh, whole view of how the foundation sees the world of Transmart, and especially for for 1.3, which the focus is on large scale variants and more. Um, what we did then is with all of the um, the all of the requests coming and all of the activities, we summarized them and we, we, we created word clouds to see um, what what the people were looking for. So in terms of data, it seemed that uh, clinical data was one of the one of the, the chief um, requirements, followed by um, imaging and phenotypical data. Surprisingly, the genes and genomes and VCFs uh, uh, are quite low, but I, that doesn't I, that's not necessarily reflective of um, of the truth, because you can see the BAM files come come in, so it's how you interpret the the tag tag cloud. Um, then the needs for many things. It seems like everyone needs data. Something that we we kind of already keyed up. So everyone's looking for uh, uh, instances which are already pre-populated with the scientific data of their liking, uh, rich enough to be able to start um, activity straight away. Um, so before before I go on, just to tell you as well that I'm, I'm at the end of the presentation, I'm going to provide links where everyone can have access to all of the artifacts and all of the matrices presented um, in this presentation. It's, it's, um, it was one of the foundations from the, uh, one of the organizations which is supporting us in this. So um, the the general summarized needs, there seems there seems to be a lot of uh, a lot of needs around analytics and curation, and uh, a lot of requirements specifically around the platform, so we're looking at stuff like security and uh, and uh, big data backends for, for genomics. And uh, this is probably reflective of the, of the projects that were participating, or at least the, pro the European projects that are um, in the using Transmart so, um, at the moment. And it's the, um, the neurogenerative disease is one of those strong ones, followed by um, oncology. Um, safety uh, disease and, and infection. So um, this is the my final well, the final slide, which is basically um, shown, so it just provides a little bit more of a, of a granularity to who exactly the requesters were. So as I mentioned in Jay's slides, uh, the requester was broadly put as Etrix, but, you, but this slide um, Specifically uh, shows which which projects requested uh, which ones. So we did um, we did uh, our view of how which which class of features these are, and um, we just ranked them by the total number of uh, requests. Um, and with that, uh, I'd like to to point you to this um, to this uh, link here, which will open up a Google Drive folder with all of the artifacts from the presentation from the workshop. It, it includes all of the project presentations. It also includes the um, attendee list. It also includes the the matrix that I showed you plus the consolidated one. 
and uh, following this there's also going to be a report coming out and with this I'd like to especially thank Natalie and uh, Kays uh, for help for their help in the in organizing the workshop and um, that's it from me thank you great thank you Yanni that was good Yanni thanks so um, we're uh, at the end of the call where we take questions and so um, if you do have uh, questions, if you haven't already, either please raise your hand or uh, put a question in, into the question window. And I would look to Terry and some of the other organizers on the call to sort of help me out with this. I got a question. So go ahead, uh, Brian. Uh, Keith, and you might have, this is for Keith, and you might have, um, uh, you know, did, did this at the last community call, which I was unable to attend. So forgive me if you, if this is repetitive, but you know, just I would wonder if you, having attended the uh, uh, the London workshop, uh, if you could give the you know kind of a you know reaction to what you just saw and an overall uh, sense of uh, what what was occurring there and some of the sure. opportunities and maybe challenges. Yeah, no, I, I think Yanni did a, a very good job of summarizing uh, things. Hmm. From my perspective, um, it was very encouraging to, to hear that um, the themes that we've been stressing as a foundation uh, for you know, version 1.3 and version 2 around genomics and wearable sensors, uh, open data, um, are really um, reflecting a lot of what's happening in the European community, eTrix and IMI projects as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think we got a little more granularity on some of the key uh, things that people are looking for uh, across the IMI projects, but I was also incredibly encouraged by the number of projects that are already using uh, Transmart in one form or another. Mm -hmm. So it was really uh, an experience growing out of uh, their personal experience with the platform and, and uh, areas where they found uh, needs going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think when we look at the um, I2B, I2B2 integration, um, and some of the aspects around that. Um, we've been talking quite extensively with Paula Viak um, at Harvard, who uh, unfortunately was not able to attend that, that meeting. Um, but, uh, you know, Paul has some very specific ideas around that, and I think uh, finding ways for Transmart and I2B2 to, to talk together more effectively um, is, in fact, uh, something that's really encouraging. Uh, in fact, one of the, the things that we all talked about was, uh, given how Paul is a real, you know, Super user probably doesn't define it even adequately enough, but a real super user of the platform um, that we want a 1.3 that uh, that Paul and his team uh, feel really satisfies all their functional needs for the programs that they're running through their particular yeah. grants and others. As, as others, how about the how about the um, the uh, you know emergence of imaging as uh, as pointed out by Giannis and you know and that's got to be a part of the datathon coming up with the uh, Michael J. Fox group and it certainly is underlying a lot of that earlier work with the Alzheimer's disease. And well, imaging, is, mm -hmm. imaging is certainly very very important I agree Brian mm -hmm. and uh, you know in, in, in my experience uh, personally working with the Orion Bio Networks uh, program and some others is that a lot of what people are doing with imaging data is storing the analysis of the imaging. Um, but it's great to have the images themselves and uh, to bring up some things linked to those as well. So that's, there are a number of research projects that have been running in EK's group at Imperial uh, around imaging with the XGen integration, uh, around genome sequence with uh, the Hadoop and HMART um, that I think we can really learn from. Yeah, and we've got similar as much going on here. It isn't going Absolutely. into Transmart, but could you know? And we're sending a strong, a very strong team to the um, datathon. Yeah, and, uh, they're used to working with imaging and cog cognitive measures, and uh, and also genomics. You know, not 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 that particular order, but um, yeah. you know that kind of heterogeneous environment. So I think the datathon could be a nice place to learn about. Uh, you know, use case applications that could uh, be informative uh, in terms of some of the future platform developments. Absolutely. Long I, agree 100%. Yeah. I think that, you know, as one of the things that we saw in Yanni's uh, word clouds is that data comes up quite substantially as, as a key issue. And I think that as we go forward over the next, you know, year or two years, um, that putting together the content repository, having collections of Transmart-ready data, um, really exploring what is open data 
Uh, we're currently working on some uh, approaches to make more data available, curated in a transmart ready form. And I see that being you know, one of the key things that the foundation will focus on in, in 2016. Mm -hmm. Good, great. This is super. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to unmute Dirk. He's had his hand raised for quite some time and wants want to give Dirk from Avi a chance to either make a comment or ask a question. Dirk? Hi, uh, this question is for Jay. Um, your slide about the API mentioned connectors for Spotfire and Array Studio and our client and and I was just I saw what the words were. I was wondering what some more of the details are around those. Actually, I, I, I can address that. This is Terry. Um, there, there is currently a fairly rich uh, RESTful interface that reflects the um, API, the internal API of Transmart. And there's been a, a number of requests to enrich that RESTful API so that mechanisms like Spotfire et al. can uh, can have a well-constructed side entrance into the database. And Jay just said he could address it too, so I'm going to let him talk. <laughs> Jay, you're muted if you want to comment. Uh, actually, I don't want to comment. So uh, I was just kidding. Thanks, Terry. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, if if you have a question or a comment that you would like to make, please raise your hand as Dirk did, and we'll uh, make sure to um, give you a chance to uh, uh, speak today. Yeah, oh, actually, I will say something, Dirk. We we are looking into the Spotfire connector, right? So that's something the Hive and the Spotfire put together. We're really interested in it here. So we've got it set up on our on our server, and I think what we're running into is some issues with the implementation of the Transmart API in being able to get some of the uh, studies into the connector portion in you know the performance of doing that. And actually, we're thinking of having uh, you know, actually look into talking with the Hive potentially on uh, on having them take a look at that uh, on our behalf, but essentially on everyone's behalf. Because we, I, I think if we can solve some of those problems with the API uh, and the RESTful, RESTful API, uh, not only will we enable things like the Spotfire connector, but we'll enable um, you know, any other tool set that's, that's using the RESTful, the RESTful API. And that's sort of call number one that any tool is likely to make. Thank Great. you. Great. Okay, we're uh, 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 about eight minutes over um, our scheduled time. Um, I want to thank uh, Keith, uh, Terry, Jay, and Yanni for presentations today. I think we've had some great uh, dialogue and questions. And as, as usual, I'd like to turn to Keith to close out today's call. Well, thanks, Kevin. Uh, it was a very spirited call today. It's great to have a lot of people participating in a lot of very interesting subjects here. Um, I think uh, this is what we would like to, to have every time uh, when we get together. Uh, of the key things that we have going on, the Datathon is, is really front and center and I think is really setting a stage as some new activities for the foundation. And uh, I'll remind people that um, if you intended to be involved and you haven't responded to my email yet, you need to do that uh, immediately so we can get you confirmed on that list. Uh, again, that's June 30th to July 2nd here in Boston. Uh, the second thing is the survey of the, the platform. This is really something very important to us, uh, very useful for us as we go forward uh, to let people know how we're working, how we're doing in the community, um, what the install base is. And we'll be doing this regularly over the next uh, couple of years, uh, probably about once a year, and we'll publish a report on that. So if you haven't responded yet to the survey, uh, which I think uh, according to my poll, that would be 87% of you, uh, please respond to that survey and fill it out or have an appropriate person for your organization do that. Um, if this went to a Gmail account, please let us know what organization you're with. Uh, those results will be anonymous. They'll be held confidential in the foundation, but we'll summarize those in a report um, when the survey is completed. And don't forget, you're entered to win an iPad. So thanks, everyone, again, uh, for your efforts here. Um, we have our board meeting come up July 15th. Uh, for those of you on the board, please uh, be sure to participate, and we'll talk with you again next month. Thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of your month.